What is a license? It's a grant, essentially. Um, these are typically explicit. Lic most licenses are explicit. However, uh, they can also be implicit. The grant that you know you won't infringe on someone's uh, copyrighted work. You remember that whole um, thing where you know copyrights the balance, you know the rights of authors and creators with the rights of uh, society, and it's a public grant that we we give them, and we 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 sort of unknowingly are brought into that, okay? That's a, a, an implicit grant, but an explicit grant is a, an actual contract that's signed, okay? That's what a license is. You're granting someone permission to do a certain amount of things in a certain way, in a certain territory or area um, with an intellectual property. But it's basically you as an intellectual property holder are granting someone the a license to do something with your patented idea, something with your copyrighted work, something with your trademarked logo, etc. But it is a contract. That's what it is. Now, when you buy that Blu-ray, when you buy that video game, when you buy that book, okay, you own the plastic that the Blu-ray comes in and is, you know, burned on. Uh, you own the paper of the book. You own the, the, the paper cardboard sleeve of the vinyl record and the plastic disc itself. You can do whatever the fuck you want with that, okay? Uh, what's encoded into the grooves of the vinyl or encoded into the uh, Blu-rays of the Blu-ray or what's written on the page, the intellectual properties, you have a license to access. You have a license to consume. You have no license to ill. You have a, that's a Beastie Boys reference. Um, you have a license to just watch. You have a license to just listen. You have a license to just read, okay? What's, you know, the intellectual property parts. You cannot, um, but you can do whatever the fuck you want with the hard good. The book, you can recycle it, burn it, trade it, give it away, lend it, whatever, whatever you want, okay? But most of what you pay when you buy a Blu-ray is you're paying for the license, the licensing rights to watch it. Okay, the disc costs nothing um, to make or manufacture. You're paying for the right to watch. You're paying for the right to have access. Okay. All media industries are based on licensing. It's just an essential part of of what of what they do. All freaking media industries. You want to use someone's song in your documentary, you gotta license it. You want to use someone's photo in your documentary, you gotta license it. You want to use someone's art as the basis for a set design on your film, you gotta license it. Um, you want to sample someone's music, you gotta license it. Uh, you want to uh, perform someone's play, you gotta license it. Okay, you want to use someone's logo on a shirt or on a coffee mug you got to you got to license it what whatever okay the relationship in this there's there's three different well there's two two primary relationships there is the licensor and the licensee think about this employer and employee a licensor is the person or the entity person human people us human people corporate people okay um, that own the intellectual property. The licensee is the entity, person, human person, corporate person, whatever, that wants to use it or, or is using it, okay? So that's, so that's the general difference. Licensor is the owner. Licensee is those who seek to use it. Now, an assignee is someone who buys your patent, is someone who buys your master rights to your album, someone who buys the publishing rights to your book, uh, someone who buys your logo, uh, whatever it is. A sign means this. Someone wants my logo. They buy it. We work out a license where they are listed as the, you know, they've been assigned it. That means they did not invent it, they did not come up with the logo, they did not come up with the copyrighted work, they're not the author, but they've bought it, they, they, they own it. How this works like in, in patent is, uh, you know, like I said, like someone works in the sciences at the university, 
they come up with a patentable idea, they file for a patent, they're listed as the inventor on the patent, and then they must assign that patent to the University of Oregon. So they're listed as inventor, but in that re relationship, the University of Oregon becomes the assignee, all right? Or they've been assigned, they've bought the patent, which means that if someone wants to license that patent from the University of Oregon, the University of Oregon then is the licensor, and whoever wants to use it is the licensee. So there's a couple types of licensing agreements. One is exclusive. This type of licensing agreement is uh, most advantageous to the licensee. It gives them the exclusive right, usually within a product market. So this, this really does not favor the licensor because the licensor, if, say if I own uh, a trademark, I would want to license it to as many companies as I can to make the most amount of money. Um, but if you're a licensor, you would like to have the exclusive right to use my trademark um, on goods because it best serves you. It gives you a monopoly, okay? So the license is granted at the exclusion of all others. It's preferable for a licensee. An example of this is the University of Oregon has an exclusive license with Nike for the use of the stylized O that you see on stuff for headwear and apparel. So next time you're in Eugene, go to the duck store and look at anything that you wear on your head or on your body that has an O on it. And we're talking about the O, you know, the Autzen Hayward Field O. You will not find anything in the duck store that you put on your head or your body that has an O on it that doesn't have a swoosh on it. And that isn't like 80 fucking dollars. That's why everything is so goddamn expensive that has, a, has an O on it. You could buy a coffee mug with the O on it. That's fine. But Nike has an exclusive agreement in the product market for headwear and apparel. Now, that behooves Nike immensely because they can make and have an exclusive monopoly on anything with the O on it that we wear. It'd be best better for the University of Oregon to allow Reebok and Adidas to make O stuff, but they can't. They can, uh, Adidas could license Oregon or go ducks from the university and use it, um, you know, that, but they couldn't use anything with, with, an, o, with an O on it. Okay, a non-exclusive is this. The licensor can license to as many, um, as many, companies or entities as, as they want, okay? So um, say the University of Oregon has a non-exclusive license with a company for the O for coffee mugs. This means that anybody who wants to make coffee mugs that gets a license from the University of Oregon can make freaking coffee mugs, okay? This is the most advantageous license for a licensor because it allows them to license as many companies as they can. The last is what's called a sole license. A sole license means this. It's basically an exclusive license that allows the licensor to also, ma also make products or, or to use the intellectual property in some way. So if we were to think hypothetically uh, to the Oregon O, if the University of Oregon had a sole license with Nike, for the use of the O on headwear and apparel, it would mean this. Nike would have a monopoly except for this. The University of Oregon could also make headwear and apparel with the O on it. Okay, so Nike, you know, this would disallow Adidas and, you know, uh, Reebok and other competitors from making stuff with the O on it. But the University of Oregon, if they wanted, could make their own t-shirts with the O on it. That's why, you know, if you're on a student club or if you're in a fraternity or sorority, you can't just like make gear with the O on it. You have to go through official channels on, on the university, uh, at the University of Oregon, because the University of Oregon can get sued. They could get in a lot of trouble for you making gear with, with the O on it, because Nike, will, will, you know, Uncle Phil will get on that red phone and he'll, he'll make a holler 
um, you know, he'll make a holler at us about, about that. Okay. So that's what a sole license is. It allows, it's an exclusive license, but it allows the owner, the licensor to also use it. 